Right now on WCNC Charlotte, preparing for the worst. Top health officials now say between 100,000 and 240,000 Americans could die from COVID-19. And the thing is, folks, that is with current social distancing. They say keeping the death toll down is up to all of us. There's no magic bullet. There's no magic vaccine or therapy. It's just behaviors. Each of our behaviors translating into something that changes the course of this viral pandemic over the next 30 days. Now is the time, whenever you're having an effect, not to take your foot off the accelerator and on the brake. Meanwhile, the a UN chief says this is the worst global crisis since World War II. To put that in perspective, one month ago, there were only two coronavirus related deaths here in the U.S. As of right now, there are more than 4,000. Here in the Carolinas, there are now about just over 1,500 cases here in North Carolina with nine deaths. In South Carolina, there are about 1,083 cases with 22 deaths. NBC's Tom Costello has the very latest. President Trump with top public health experts delivering a grim forecast for the coronavirus pandemic now gripping the country. I want every American to be prepared for the hard days that lie ahead. We're going to go through a very tough two weeks. This is going to be a very painful, very, very painful two weeks. The White House displaying this stunning slide, showing even if current social distancing guidelines are maintained, the White House projects 100,000 to 240,000 deaths in the U.S. over the next several months, a casualty rate that would eclipse the number of American lives lost in the Vietnam War. As sobering a number as that is, we should be prepared for it. The new data showing the current pace of the epidemic spread in the U.S., the epicenter of New York, illustrated in this steep curve. The alarming forecast prompting the president to extend those social distancing guidelines until the end of April, backing off his comments from last week when he said he hoped the country would reopen for business by Easter. Even with three-quarters of Americans subject to stay-at-home orders in their states, more than a dozen governors, many in the South and the West, have declined to issue those orders statewide. Overnight, during an NBC News special, Savannah asked Dr. Anthony Fauci if enough is being done to keep the death rate down. Is the social distancing that's being done right now in every state enough for that scenario to occur? The mitigation and social distancing clearly works. We need to put our foot on the accelerator and not on the brake. We have 30 days of the extension of the mitigation, the guidelines, we need to really push. Tom Costello, NBC News. Meanwhile, South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster stepping up the response there in the Palmetto State. He has now ordered all non-essential businesses to close. WCNC Shroud's Billie Jean Shaw now live at a barber shop in Fort Mill. And Billie Jean, folks rushing to the shop today before it has to close. Good morning, Ben. You know this executive order is going to impact a lot of small businesses, especially the hair industry. But here at the Fort Mill Barbershop, the owner tells me he's had a rush of calls and clients to come in. Everyone trying to get their last shape up before 5 o'clock today. Stop the spread. Be as aggressive as we can be using the facts, the science, and the data, and the knowledge and recommendation of the experts in the field. South Carolina is the latest state in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic to enforce stricter restrictions in hopes of stopping the spread. Today at 5, the governor has ordered all non-essential businesses to close. That includes nightclubs, movie theaters, gyms, salons, and barbershops. As of this morning, state health officials report more than 1,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the Palmetto State. 22 people have died, including a person in York County. The virus is, is still spreading, still growing. And Ben, this executive order comes just one day after Governor McMaster signed another order clo closing all public access, access to beaches. And this executive order will stay in effect for the next 15 days. If you have any questions about where you can go in South Carolina during this time, just head to our WCNC mobile app or our website. Reporting live from York County, Billie Jean Shaw, WCNC Charlotte. It's certainly an adjustment for a lot of the small shops there uh, around the state of South Carolina, much like they've had to do here in North Carolina. All right, Billie Jean, Thanks.
Some sad news to bring you today as a Montgomery County Sheriff's deputy has died due to the coronavirus. 43 year old Deputy Bud, as he was known, died yesterday after suffering uh, allergy symptoms. He eventually went and got tested and his test came back positive and he was admitted to the hospital on Monday. During his time with the Sheriff's Department, he served many roles, but said that he loved being a school resource officer the most. He survived by his wife and their five kids. According to a new study, North Carolina among the top five states in the country right now for unemployment claims. The state has seen more than 300,000 claims since March 16th. And unfortunately, that number just going to continue to go up. Of course, we don't have to tell you today, the first of the month, a lot of folks wondering how are they going to pay their rent and other bills. WCNC Charlotte's Richard Devane spoke with people who are facing those concerns. Yeah, good morning. Basically, a lot of folks know that as the calendar turns to April 1st, this is no joke. This is not April Fool's. A lot of people struggling to pay their rent and handle their mortgages. All of this is the governor's issued an executive order that will block utility companies from turning off people's utilities during this trying time. That lasts for 120 days. Also, both for the state as well as Mecklenburg County, there has been there will be no hearings on evictions or foreclosures so that gives people more time to stay in their homes. A lot of stores are cutting back hours or laying off workers. We actually spoke to a man who has actually benefited because of this virus. I actually have been doing more, been more busy with my work. This car is a grocery delivery service that works with Publix, Aldi's, the wholesale clubs. And so we've been doing that. We're, they've been actually been behind by two or three days. Yeah, some of those unemployment checks they say should be going out soon. A lot of folks depending on those. We can tell you we have a complete list of resources that you might want to look at on our website to help you through this troubled time. We're in Southwest Charlotte. This is Richard Devane for WCNC Charlotte. Richard, thank you. A viral video with millions of views shows a, a doctor making claims about the coronavirus, but some of the claims just don't seem legit at all. So we had our verified team check it out to see what's going on. Here's Jason Puckett. We were sent this video with more than 2 million views on Facebook alone. First, we tracked down the original video. It was posted by Dr. Kenji Ehrlich on Instagram. He's a chiropractor in LA. So we set out to verify. Are the claims in this video true? We're using a variety of sources, mainly the WHO, CDC, and NIH. Right away, we want to tell you, there are multiple false claims. Just drinking hot water can kill it. False. The CDC says they don't know what exact temperatures will destroy the virus. They do think extreme heat will do the trick, but we're talking hundreds of degrees or higher. Don't drink that. Vitamin C can kill it, no problem. False. If you have a vitamin C deficiency, increasing intake can help your immune system, but vitamin C won't do anything to the virus on its own. There's no proof it does, and the CDC and WHO say there's no such cure. Just being in the sun can kill it. False. Sunlight is a source of UV radiation. Some hospitals use really powerful UV lights to sanitize equipment, but the WHO says UV strong enough to actually destroy the virus would also destroy your skin. It can only live on your hands five to ten minutes. False again. The NIH and CDC estimate the virus can live from a few hours to days on any surface, including your skin. If it died after five to ten minutes on our skin, it wouldn't be as easily spread as it is right now. I remember my wife telling me there's actually a pattern on the coronavirus. Then I looked a little further and there is a patent on it. It's patent US 2006257852, a US patent on the coronavirus. And it's called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus. That was applied for in 2006. This is actually an old claim. We debunked it in January. The patents are real, but they aren't for this virus. Remember, coronavirus is actually a family name. The virus causing COVID-19 right now is a type of coronavirus. So were SARS, MERS, and these other viruses. After those past viruses, researchers and companies filed patents for testing and vaccines for them. Key point, none of these patents deal with the current strain. So if you see this, please stop sharing it. It's full of false and misleading information. And if you've got other claims for us to look at, send us an email. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. What a good lesson. Wow. Not a single thing that guy said was true. Well, as we've been telling you, the American Red Cross is facing a severe blood shortage right now. And for people who, who depend on blood donations, this is their health crisis. Christy Lee introduces us to one family who is really affected by this. Look at the hoop. Girls, let's go play basketball. 
Tracy Antonelli has a rare blood disorder called beta thalassemia, and so do the three girls. My name is Emmy. My name is Rosie. My name is Franny. She and her husband, Patrick Moody, adopted. <laughs> Come on, Em. No! It was very much done on purpose. Franny. Come on, Franny. Yes! Woo! I thought it would be just a beautiful thing to adopt children who have beta thalassemia as well. Tracy and the girls get blood transfusions every three weeks. They need it to live. So we don't make hemoglobin, basically, which is what carries oxygen around your bodies. She says she understands why people may be nervous to give, but hopes they'll consider it an essential service. Is It's one of those necessary things that people need to go out and do, just like going to the supermarket or going to pick up a prescription at the pharmacy. Any big plans for the weekend, Jeffrey? And I really can't think of a more perfect way to help a stranger than to go out and donate blood. If you are healthy and would like to give, go to the American Red Cross website to see if you qualify and to set up an appointment. There will be at least three grateful little patients. Three, two, one. We love donator. <laughs> for donating. Blood. Donating. Thank you for donating. Good job, girls. Breaking right now, Wimbledon officially canceled. Wimbledon was scheduled to be played there on the outskirts of London, as, as it always is, June 29th through the 12th of July. It now joins the growing list of sporting events scrapped this year. The last time Wimbledon was called off, back during World War II, the year 1945. Britain's Prince Charles recovered from the coronavirus at this point. The 71-year-old heir to the throne came out of self-isolation Monday. He says he's only suffered relatively mild symptoms overall. His office says he's now in good health. He's still in a state of social distance and general isolation, just to be sure. His wife, Camilla, also remaining in self-isolation until the end of the week in case she develops symptoms.